Hi, and welcome to part one in the Hive's PCB design with KiCad series. My name is Ben, and in this video, I'll be covering some basic uh, PCB stuff and uh, some ter basic terminology. So let's jump into it. So I'll start with what is a PCB? The traditional way of connecting chips and components together has been through wire wrapping and breadboarding, which is shown here. Um, but these come with a whole host of non-idealities and parasitics, are, are also dreadful to debug, and frankly are difficult to safely integrate into larger systems. PCBs, like this, short for uh, printed circuit boards, eliminate these wires um, and plug-in components in favor of metaphorically printing the wiring and connection points onto a flat, typically rigid surface, and then soldering the components uh, onto those points for a mechanical and electrical connection. This helps to both alleviate many of the parasitics, though it does not eliminate them, as well as making the board much cleaner for visual acuity and mechanical safety and integration. PCBs are not truly printed these days, but the name still remains. PCBs are physically composed of different layers of material that each fulfill different purposes. The solid non-conductive portion in the middle that forms the backing of the circuit is known as the substrate, and it's typically made of a polymer resin called FR4, though there are many other options these days. PCB stack-ups, meaning the ordering and structure of these compositional layers, are generally described by the number of metal layers that are built in. It's most common that this metal is copper, but there are others that are sometimes used. The thickness of this uh, metal can vary. In the US, it's generally described by ounces per square foot, and you'll most commonly find quarter ounce, half ounce, one ounce, and two ounce weights, though others are possible. Whereas internationally, these would be described in microns, with half ounce copper equating to roughly 18 microns and full ounce copper uh, equating to roughly 35 microns. Over the external copper is a layer of protective paint called solder mask, uh, which protects the copper from oxidation and physical damage, as well as electrical impropriety. And finally, over the solder mask, an ink, known as silkscreen, may be applied to add text or graphics to either surface of the board. Additional internal copper layers may be built as well into this stack to create four, eight, or even more layers for additional wiring and heat conduction, which is shown in the bottom figure. <clears throat> I want to talk briefly about something called electroplating. I won't go too much into detail about the fabrication process during these videos, but there is one process that does need to be understand, and that is electroplating. Electroplating describes the electrochemical process by which copper can be grown onto a variety of surfaces, and it is the most common way to add copper onto the, surf onto the substrate uh, in the PCB world. Electroplating, or just plating, is commonly described uh, or heard when referring to what are known as vias. Let's consider a component uh, on the left-hand side of the bottom left figure here, sitting on the top side of the board. If it needs to connect to something that is also on the top side of the board, there is no problem. We just connect with a single trace, which is what we call the printed copper wire, along the top surface. But what if we needed to connect to something on the other side of the board? A hole can be drilled through the substrate to make a path, but it is still non-conductive. Vias are electroplated holes that connect traces uh, across different copper layers. These plated holes are usually quite small. Uh, through hole components uh, will also typically use plated holes. Uh, some holes, such as mounting holes, may be left unplated through holes. Uh, if you'd like uh, to know more about the actual fabrication process itself, the Hive has a basic set of tools with which you can learn a basic method of hobbyist level fabrication, or you can Google to learn the nitty gritty of production grade manufacturing processes. The important thing to know is that the electroplating adds a thin layer of metal on the inside of those holes, uh, and they must be plated. So let's go through some PCB terminology now. Um, all of this is going to be in relation to the graphics on the right. The green colored material is the solder mask that I mentioned earlier, which acts as a protective layer to any copper underneath. Uh, these days, solder mask comes in a wide variety of colors, including black, white, red, purple, and yellow, among more others. The gold colored materials or polygons are copper. 
all the places uh, at which a component needs to be connected to the board must be free of solder mask to allow for soldering to actually happen. But because co copper oxidizes so readily in the ambient environment, the copper is always, always nearly coated in a less, less oxidizable metal, a process known as finishing. Gold is a typical finish, which is why this so-called copper is actually golden in color. Uh, tin is also a common alternative that is uh, substantially less expensive. Areas of exposed copper metal include surface-mounted pads where the surface-mounted devices connect to, annular rings around any through holes, as well as around slots, and around vias. These rings of copper allow for solder joints to be made between connections and the covered traces. Without them, soldering would be much more challenging. Through holes describe any circular hole through which a component, electrical or not, is placed. As mentioned before, these are typically plated by default. Slots are non-circular through holes and may or may not be plated, depending on your design. And vias are the interlayer, interlayer connection holes that must be plated and can also be used for heat conduction and dissipation. The last thing that is sometimes shown in gold is the actual copper traces, also known as tracks or routes that run between pads and plated holes to electrically connect components and devices together. These are usually hidden by solder mask, but can often be seen on a physical board as slight ridges pushing up from underneath. The text in white is a silkscreen. Modern fabrication houses can, like with solder mask, print silkscreen in a wide variety of colors, so it's not always white. It's generally used to print informational text and graphics onto the board with a non-oxidizing ink. This informational text can include reference designators, which are the part identifiers for assembly, part outlines used for orientation and for avoiding part overlap, and pin numbers or pin indicators for functional referencing and part orientation. A common use case is a small dot indicating pin one of an IC that we can see on the upper left as IC1. Silkscreen is also used to identify the designer, project name, revision, year, companies, warnings, and other important information like input range or mechanical restrictions. Putting it all together, PCBs are commonly filled with these elements identified previously with reference designators, through holes, surface mounted pads, text, part outlines, pin numbers, vias, and traces all being present to enable the easy assembly and use of the board. One last important note about fabrication that you should keep in mind while designing is the idea of where components sit relative to where the traces are and how the component will actually connect to those traces. Surface mounted components, for example, require vias to connect between layers, but not necessarily uh, to connect to traces on the same side of the board. Through hole components, by contrast, have built-in holes, but if these holes are not plated, you must be aware of where the trace comes from, which side of the board it's on. Consider the case on the left, a through hole component with a non-plated hole. If the trace is on the bottom side of the board, there's no problem because the solder joint connects the lead to the annular ring of the hole and therefore to the trace. However, if the trace is on the top side of the board, the component will not the component lead will not be connected to this trace because the hole is non-conducting and the lead is not soldered to the top side. This issue can be avoided by either a placing traces and components properly with non-plated through holes to avoid this problem, B, using the double-sided method, uh, solder method shown on the right, if possible, or C, always plating your component through holes. Consider your fabrication house cost and time when making these choices. Most fabrication houses will plate all of your holes by default already, However, if you're fabricating at the hive, we don't uh, guarantee plating, therefore you must consider this uh, in depth. And that ends part one of the PCB design tutorial with KiCad.
Today we covered what PCBs are and a lot of jargon and terminology surrounding their design and fabrication. As always, a PDF of this video is available at, as well, linked in the description and hosted on the Hive Wiki. In part two, I'll introduce PCB design software with a broad overview of how this family of software works, bring KiCad into our lexicon, and end with a generic PCB design fl flow that we'll try to follow throughout the subsequent videos. See you then.